the writer's dream. This is a show where authors could talk about how they write their books, how they publish their books, and how they market their books. Uh, you can find us on Facebook. Uh, the name of the Facebook page, guess what, is The Writer's Dream. If you want to be on the show, you can message me through that Facebook page. Uh, we also air here at uh, ltveh.org. Um, just look, I believe it's under videos, and you will find the show. Just scroll down, find the show, and you can see any of the shows that they have archived. It's also uh, available on Channel 20 that airs between East Hampton and Montauk, and uh, they air it uh, three times a week. Uh, also available on Channel 20 west of East Hampton. That's all of Long Island, Channel 20, Friday at 3 o'clock. Uh, we air. Uh, I'm on YouTube. Uh, you have to on YouTube. You have to uh, search my name, Linda Maria Frank, and then just click on the picture, and you'll get all the videos. And there are about 150 different authors, all local. So if you're interested in reading, writing, producing a book, there's a lot of advice on there, and I strongly suggest that uh, you engage in that. Today's guest is Joel Reitman, and Joel Reitman is a former teacher and also a former journalist, and he has now turned full-time author. So, um, Joel, tell us about how you morphed from teacher, I'm interested because I was a teacher too, how you morphed into an author. Well, not really a full-time author. Writing is, as you know, is a very difficult process, and publishing can be even, and promoting can be even more arduous. Oh, marketing arduous. is a horror. Very hard, <laughs> very hard. Anyway, I started out as a special education teacher for many years, and just before retirement, I um, sort of got cozy with the local newspaper, a weekly, the Smithtown Messenger, and I was doing sports photography and writing a little blurb underneath so the parents would buy the newspaper and promote the newspaper that way. And upon retirement, they asked if I wanted to be a journalist. So I continued the sports photography. I did a little... Um, uh, fly fishing um, article, and then slowly I became more and more of a journalist covering the things that go on in Smithtown, the little events, the the traffic, the weather, the politics, the and the politics we did often went to uh, Suffolk County politics, and eventually I did a uh, article on pollution. Uh, pollution was pretty rampant at Brookhaven Lab. And I'd be kind of involved and interested in covering that and writing about that pollution up in Nisiquag, which is still going on. And I sort of kept that in the back of my mind. Uh, upon uh, moving, we moved to uh, Southwold, and I got a job with the Traveler Watchman. Became a journalist covering the township of Riverhead and Calverton. And the airport that Grumman is there, and there is pollution there. And I keep this all in the back of my mind while I'm trying to write um, creatively, and I just couldn't. I would try for like a page or a half a page. Nothing was coming out. It was strictly trade journalism and just the facts, sort of. So different. It's, it's so, so different. different. So very different. Uh, my wife saw a thing in the uh, recreation department. They were doing a, um, um, a uh, memoirs class. And I didn't really want to disclose my whole inner self to memoirs. So I decided I'd do <laughs> why <laughs> <laughs> decided to make a little create creative 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 memoirs, and that sort of led me to maybe more of a creative writer. And keeping that pollution in the back of my mind, eventually evolved into a book, which would be my second book. The first book was the one right here, B is for dog, uh, D is for dog, B is for Brooklyn, which is nostalgia, which is basically memoirs. Creatively, though, what happened in Brooklyn, even though I left Brooklyn when I was 10, moving to L.A. But People never leave Brooklyn. Never, never leave Brooklyn. Brooklyn. They never leave Brooklyn. So <laughs> that's the first book. And I, I ended up paying a lot of money to have that book published. Uh, I learned my lesson the hard way, that one. And I, had a, I could buy the book back if I bought 25 books at a time at almost list price. So when I finally did this book on pollution and hidden secrets of like Flight 800 or whatever went on, okay. I decided I would find another way to promote my book and get it published. I uh, didn't realize the set of skills that I would need in order to do this. 
uh, before marketing, you have to get, before you even get there, you have to get the book into a PDF format, which takes computer skills. You have to be able to upload it into a file. Um, Amazon has a great website, uh, Kindle Publishing. KDP. KDP. That's how I do my books. free. Uh, you can buy the books back for uh, just a fraction of the cost. Mm -hmm. But you need to have some skills, a set of skills, and be able to lay out a book, a uh, book which I could do. Uh, you also need a cover. And in the first book, they supplied the cover. The second book, I found various websites that have covers for sale, reasonably $40, $50, $80 a pop. And that's where I got the cover for the second book. And that book is basically a canvassing or a story wrapping around right? um, the various sites that would have some kind of a radar facility in order to justify the downing of Flight 800 by civilian activities, uh -huh. in my mind, uh -huh. and my take on it, my spin. Yes. So I ramble around um, Camp Hero out in Montauk, mm -hmm. and down around the caves and the tunnels, and then I ramble around sort of East Hampton Airport also, um, and the harbor in Greenport, uh, Plum Island, where I <laughs> sort of realized that what Lyme disease was about and where it came from, and of course Brookhaven Lab, which has several reactors that are now defunct and polluted. Putting them all together, the protagonist, which is, happens to be a writer, and his friend happens to be a detective, they end up in the tunnels of uh, Camp Hero. You're talking about what lies below. What lies latest. below. The, yeah. let's, let's explain that to, to the audience. What lies below is the novel um, that you wrote that we're really going to talk about. Uh, you, right. Your other two books are, you know... Yeah, well, before we get back to that, but the, this is your first the, fiction the, book. The last book, Exploring Long Island, oh, started out. Awesome. I was doing real estate on the site also, and I would do a little tri fold brochure of farms and hand it out to clients on my desk. I said, that's pretty interesting, and it went pretty quick, so let me do one on uh, um, wineries. Then I said, wait a minute, this is pretty good. Let me do a book on all of them. And that was the first edition of Exploring Long Island. Okay. This is the second edition, as of 2023, basically a listing of every place you could go. And the cover was done by my niece, so I didn't have to pay a whole lot of money for it, and I got a nice cover. So basically, you went from journalism to nonfiction to fiction. <laughs> yeah, basically. Well, and and not, it is a process. It, it, it's definitely a yeah. process. I mean, I have another book in mind, which would, again, be like a conspiracy thing, having to do with a submarine and submarine base in New Suffolk and a B-24 plane that crashed in um, Laurel, New York. So that's in the back of my mind, I'm working on that. Okay, which would be but, but let's, let's talk about, let's talk about what, what lies, lies below. below. What lies below is, uh, he's a, he's a, the protagonist is a journalist who um, gets uh, into a mess in writing in uh, Long Beach, California, uh, where he lives and has to sort of get out of there. And he co has a friend who lives in Long Island. His friend is Detective Green. And so he comes back to Long Island and uh, without a job. Uh, but Detective Green realizes that uh, he has a, there's, a, there's a murder someplace going on. I'm not going to disclose where. And he needs an investigative reporter to help him out. And the two buddies work together on this story, which is what Lies Below is all about. Okay, so, and you took all this research that you actually had done as a journalist about the pollution on Long Island uh, that none of us like to think about. I am, my house is in the uh, crosshairs of the uh, Bethpage plume, so. <laughs> right. Yeah, so, uh, and we wonder why so many people have cancer on Long Island, but yeah, so um, that's an important message, actually, I think. So. Uh, but this is basically the pollution underneath Montauk. No, it's basically the pollution underneath Brookhaven Lab. Oh, oh, all where, right. That's really where, where it all cousin. began. Where it all began. Okay. Right? And uh, I noticed it because one day when I was driving around, there were these Suffolk County water trucks on William Floyd Parkway, and I didn't know what that was about. And I realized that finally found out they're putting in uh, city water or safer water into the homes in North Brookhaven. South of the lab. 
Yeah, because they, it was a plume again. The plume right? was running under under the expressway. Yeah, my uh, my cousin worked at Brookhaven. He was a, he is a scientist. He worked there for a while. My right. parents lived in Leisure Village, which is down the street from right. Brookhaven. I visited there many times. It's uh, Brookhaven yeah. Lab. Yeah, well, even when the reactor was running, I was there. You know, well, there so, were three reactors at one yeah. time. Yeah, well, this was the some I forget what it was called. The something beam reactor. Or, yeah, but the headwaters of the Potomac the, River are also in there, also too. Yeah. And yeah. then, um, then there is Shoreham, the nuclear reactor. Well, Shoreham that never, never was. really polluted. Shoreham is another. <laughs> it never was. Never really ran, <laughs> but um, it was definitely not. Never should never have run. It was um, erected uh, in the daytime and dismantled in the evening by various people. But yeah, that's. Yeah, I. Um, when they were uh, proposing and starting to build that, I was teaching general science, and I gave my class a uh, an assignment that was a simulation game. And the idea was that they were going to build a nuclear reactor in our community. And so the kids, what the kids had to do was they had to take they had to role play. We had journalists, we had the town supervisor, we had teachers, we had concerned parents, we had scientists, and they all played a role. And we had this town meeting, and everybody gave their uh, idea of whether it was safe or not to have this in the neighborhood. And at the time, I was all for nuclear energy, okay? And through the research that the kids did, it was so good that I actually, they actually changed my mind and I said, no, this is not a good idea. And of course, what killed that reactor was the people who went to Albany and protested because every nuclear reactor has to have an evacuation route. Right. How do you get off Long Island? Right. <laughs> the that expressway. It's yeah. <laughs> probably good, it was going to be a safe reactor. Technology, it's just going to be run rather poorly and without. Well, they said even the building was right. very poor. So, you know, the construction. Yeah. It's still there. The building I is know. still there. Yeah. There's still a restaurant it. near there that I really like. You La Plague. Can, yeah, La Plage. <laughs> La Plage, yeah. La Plage, yeah. So, yeah. Yeah you, can, yeah, you can go down the road. My daughter lives in Waiting River, so you can go down and take a look at the reactor once in a while. Yeah. Right, yeah. Yeah, yeah it's in, in, in the midst of a beautiful marsh. It's gorgeous, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it's beautiful. And the area around Brookhaven Lab is also very pretty, too. Oh, yeah. All it's Pine Barren, a lot of wildlife in there. And they mm -hmm. polluted a lot of it. They uh, yeah. They threw a lot of the a lot of the pollutants from the reactors into the forest, into the woods, into the Pine Barren. Yeah, well, I, I live near Republic, near Republic mm -hmm. Airport, which was Republic, of course, aviation. Right back in the 50s and the 40s and whatnot, and also not too far from Grumman, and all of those places polluted terribly. I mean, they, the stuff that they were using is just, I mean, <laughs> probably glows in the dark, but <laughs> but that's that was then. Yeah. This is well, now. they found about the pollution at Brookhaven Lab through the deer. The people yeah. were hunting deer. And that's in your book, get, yeah. Yeah, it's in there, and they would, they would People get sick and they didn't know why they're getting sick. So that's how they found out about it. The deer were actually crossing back and forth across the parkway onto private land and that rather than hunting on the lab. Mm -hmm. And that's how they found out about it. Basically. Yeah, that's uh, yeah, it's pretty scary stuff. So what happens in the book? Well, they, they end up they end up running around trying to figure this out and they end up in Camp Hero because Camp Hero is the site of um, uh, Tesla's of exper some of Tesla's experiments. And Tampiro is sort of a bad kind of, weird connotation anyway. People don't really know what it is, and people try to understand what it is. There's two 16-millimeter um, aircraft gun batteries. There's uh, machine gun batteries, all for protection during World War II. And underneath, they put these huge tunnels where they kept the ammunition. Mm -hmm. But these two guys ended up on a terrible, terrible rainstorm knowing that some of the files for some of this um, triangulation to try to shoot down airplanes mm -hmm. was in the files in the basement. But a terrible, terrible rainstorm, which is not made up, of course, and uh, the basement starts to get flooded. They escape through a manhole with their lives, losing all the documentation. Gone from... <laughs> that was where the book ends. Ah, oh. <laughs> so it doesn't have a happy ending, huh? No happy ending, no, no. <laughs> so, but it's a journey around Long Island, basically. 
I, I understand that um, the journalist is was an easy character for you, right? Because you could pretty much right, base correct. it on you. Right. Um, what about the other characters? Well, the, the, the police officer, also, he's not based on anybody, but my uncle was a police officer. So I have a little knowledge mm -hmm. of police department. So I sort of, it's quasi based on him, but not actually based so on him. So that's probably one of the transitions you had to make as a, as a writer from journalism to novels because it's creating characters. Right. Did you find that easy, hard? That was it hard. developed. That was hard, and the um, trying to find out background information and uh, researching things of places and people. That's also hard, mm -hmm. time-consuming, difficult. Yeah. Yeah. The advice I usually give is <clears throat> that because um, I I do have in the past. I don't haven't done one recently. I do workshops for kids about writing. And they always ask, where do your characters come from? Are they real people and whatnot? And I said, sometimes they're real people. But if you want to create a character, just take a few um, celebrities and, and just pull the characteristics you like because right. you know about these people or people in your life. And you don't have to make it that person, but you're going to pull characteristics. And I always tell them, if you write a book and the people don't like your characters, they're not going to like your book. Characters are very important. Those are the hardest part of writing. Yeah, I think so too. Setting, make the setting a character. Right. Make that setting, and you've obviously Brooklyn and and right. bo in both your books you're able to do that. The plot is the plot. The plot is the you know the puzzle that the characters are trying to right. solve. Right. You know they always go through. Is it plot driven or is it character driven? It's kind of both. This this is definitely both. Yeah. Definitely both, yeah. I mean, uh, I see it because I write mystery stories. So my, every, you know, people say, I just let the book develop. I can't do that, really. I have to have a construct and, a, and an outline. I have to know that everything ties up at the end. I can't have a clue hanging out here that doesn't mean anything. Yeah, it was, it was hard to, to end. I, the ending is sort of a, a takeoff on one of um, Milton DeMille's stories about the uh, about 9-11. Oh, Nelson, Nelson DeMille. Yeah, yeah he, he, one at the end of his story. Nightfall. Did, what's that? Nightfall. Right, That Nightfall. was a great book. Right. So he sort of ends it like it all goes poof. So I believe that's a pretty neat way to end things. So maybe I could have my own. Yeah. This, yeah that's, because many things in life do end that way. Right. Poof. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's a good way to put it. So... Um, that's the writing of the book, and as you said, then you need the computer skills. And the computer skills, you know, if you do it often enough, they come. Because I was never a person who loved computers, but as a teacher, it's, you know, you had to learn. You had to put your grades on, you had to put the attendance on, and then if you wanted to make a lesson plan, blah, blah, blah. So I learned when I was still teaching, and then my son is in the field, so, you know, he taught me a few things, and I found PowerPoint very... Um, uh, because I do lectures. That I, was... I taught uh, a publishing class, a computerized oh, publishing class in uh, adult education. Mm -hmm. That's where that some of that two-dimensional, yeah, yeah. So that's and the, and right. then the the computer. I always say to budding authors, make the computer your best friend, because that's where you're going to do a lot of your research. Uh, and and also, if you're teaching a self-publishing class. Just Google self-publishing, and my God, the amount of material that comes up and helpful material. So, but not everybody can upload and transform a Word document or a written computer document into a into Kindle a or an Amazon book. Oh no, you have to you have to have skill there. I have a graphic designer who helps me with my book. I, I've done the last four books on KDP. And I have a graphic designer, and but she's also my illustrator. So yeah, with kids' books, even though I write for like middle grade, I don't write for little kids. Um, you have to put illustrations in. You just have to. It makes for a better book. Mm -hmm. So, and also she did my covers. So I let her do that. But then I've become very, um, you know, good with it. I, I I know what has to be done. I know you have to do the copyright page. But, you know, the uh, 
KDP will give you a template for almost anything. Right, and I, I have no trouble getting things up, uploaded to the computer, laying out things for the, for the book, the copyright page, the introduction page. Mm -hmm. And some of the illustrations I rely on, on photography. Yes. Because yeah. I'm pretty fair, fairly good with photography. Mm -hmm. So I use that rather than a hand-drawn thing. Sure, sure. And, yeah. and, and the, the quality of the programs on the computers have become so good in giving you you know, if you take a picture, uh, preserving the quality of that picture. And I, I find that very helpful. So, uh, and then we get to marketing. And marketing is, an, is mar there's so many ways you can market. I mean, there's, they always say start local. So you work for newspapers. So, hey, our journalist just wrote a book. So you get a little article in your paper, your local paper. Well, I got an article, I got it into Newsday that way, and then I had two things published in Newsday, two mm -hmm. stories, one about my dog, which is in the, the dog in Brooklyn, and one was about um, my, my uh, grandmother's chicken soup. <laughs> that was pretty recent, but in Newsday, but anyway. Yeah, well, that's good. Th those are always good. And then uh, there's been a, a, an absolute explosion of indie bookstores on Long Island. And uh, if you go on their website, just scroll down to the bottom, and they'll give you a template that you can fill out, an application to get your book in the bookstore. Of course, you have to pay. But it's worth it. it it's, it's really worth it because it's local. And then you try to do a little book talk there. Well, yeah. I try to do book talks with community groups in South Hall. Mm -hmm. And then um, the bookstores are not that great for actually, they get your name out there, but they don't really get your book in front of people. They sort of put it like in the library. Well, yeah, but if you fill this out and you pay them their 25 to $50, they supposedly are featuring it in their newsletter and they have a special table for it. I find that with marketing, you to get what you pay for. Also, enter it in contests. There's a lot of different contests out right. there. Just Google book right. contests. Um, and... Um, so you enter contests. There's also some services that will write reviews for you because they tell you that on Amazon. It's good know, reads also. Yeah, well, they're connected. Right. And, um, and they want you to have uh, reviews. So, right. you, I mean, if you want a Kirkus review, you're going to pay $500 for it. I won't do that. Uh, I'll go for the cheaper ones but uh, and then get your friends to write reviews and get those reviews on Amazon. And so it's reviews, contests, local local papers, um, e even your local library. Your local library should give you at least one shot at a book talk. But the uh, problem the, the with... The local library, the church groups. Um, yeah, that's good. Um, do we have three or four libraries out east? I mm -hmm. think I've hit them all. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. and then one of my best spots is the, uh, the local drugstore has a shelf of local books. And the books all end up looking facing you, covers. That's can right, be seen. instead of the spine, which right. shows nothing. Yeah, yeah I, I agree with you. And that's the other thing you learn about is you better make your spine right. wide enough because you have very narrow books. Right. It's hard to get the spine to show. Um, yes, yeah, so there's all those things. The problem is, I find with um, events that you do, like if you do a book launch, it's getting people to come, it's getting an audience. Right. And so then. Then you start with a newsletter and a website, yeah. and it's this never-ending right. search for um, um, just just getting a following. Right. I've worked with the local libraries to do book fairs, so you get four or five local authors and people come and you, your book and their books, and that's pretty successful. You book. know what I find where I, I I have good sales the Christmas fairs in churches. I find those to be very very, very I good. I didn't realize you could do books at the Christmas fair because it seemed to be more like crafty things. Well, I so had I'm to start doing that. I had to convince uh, some of the okay. people who, who ran fairs. They said, "Well, you, it's a book," and I'll say, "What about a book is not a craft? Right. You're using raw material right. to create something original." Right. And so, I, so I, I, I convinced them. Yeah, it works, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But it, it's, the, I find the marketing is a full-time job. The writing's fun to a certain extent. The publishing is doable. 
And the marketing is, the marketing is just is a hard, lot of Probably work. harder than running the book. Right. And there's a million, um, I won't say a million, but there's a lot of places where uh, they will write articles about how to market. Um, if you join Independent Book Publishers Association, IBPA, just Google IBPA. Um, it's over $100 a year, but not excessively expensive. Okay. You get a journal, and they have a lot of... Uh, articles about marketing, and they also offer services at discount prices. So, like for instance, you can publish your book and you can put it on Amazon, but then you need a distributor. Right. And the distributor is like Ingram, Baker, and Taylor. Right. But I'm talking too much, and we have about a minute left, and I would like you to use that minute to say anything you want about your book, writing, whatever. Writing, I've had quotes from writers that writing is very, very difficult, and it truly is. And anybody who wants to write should do it not just to market and not to sell because they want to do it. You can. It's hard to sell a book, especially if you're not a famous, already famous. Mm -hmm. But just write and write. Should write every day. Whatever you write, just write something every day, and that would be my biggest plus to anybody who would like to write. Just write whatever it is, and eventually with some more. Some more creative creativity will come out of that. And also write what you know. Absolutely. That you have to write what you know. You yeah. can't write what you don't, don't know about. Well, some people, right. you know, I mean, you can write a novel and it can be about, you know, the subject can be something you don't know about. But your novel is about something that you researched. Right. And, uh, and right. Uh, I, even if you're just writing about your childhood, for God's you sake. You just wrote what happened around today. What happened in the morning. You write in the morning. What did I do in the last five minutes? Mm -hmm. And then it will grow from there. It will, it will Absolutely grow. will. That's right. the whole thing about journal writing. Well, it's a pleasure to have you, Joel. It's a pleasure. I think I learned a lot today. I don't know if anybody else learned, but I did. <laughs> I'm glad. I'm very glad. So um, when you write this second book, you have to be back on the show. Okay, absolutely. And you're going to tell us all the things you learned about marketing. <laughs> I appreciate you having me. Very nice to be Thank here. Thank you so Thank much. You. Take care. Thank you. <laughs>